All right, man. So look, it's this story that's been going around the Gabby Petito, uh, if I'm saying her name right, if I'm saying her name right, but her story has been going around surf surfacing, surfacing or circling. I'm going to say circling. I think that's a better word. Yeah. Circling the internet. All right. So her, her story has been literally circling the internet, man. If you have not heard about her story, dog, you like, I don't know what you doing with your life, bro. You must not be on social media. You must be dissing yourself from the world because her story is everywhere, bro. It's a really sad story, but no disrespect, the story is juicy. I'm not gonna lie, it's really juicy. It's like watching a Lifetime movie. Y'all ever watched a Lifetime movie and it's so juicy, the, the boyfriend went missing, then killed the girl. Like, it's just a lot going on. That's a lot going on in this story, but it, it's it's really crazy. It's a really crazy story and it's happening right, like, right there, like right in our eyes, bro. Uh, but I seen this news lady or whatever, and she was speaking on, I guess, the missing white woman syndrome. I didn't finish watching the whole video because I want to react to it, want to react, get my full authentic reaction. Even though I seen the beginning of it, still want to get my full authentic reaction for the rest of the video. Uh, so yeah, man, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, follow your boy on all social media platforms down below. Without further ado, let's get it, man. If you've been watching the news for the past few days or on Twitter or, or TikTok, you're probably familiar with the name Gabby Petito, the 22-year-old aspiring social media influencer who was reported missing after her fiancé returned from their van life excursion without her. On Sunday, human remains believed to be Petitos were found in a national park in Wyoming. An autopsy is scheduled for tomorrow to confirm the identity. Now, it goes without saying that no family should ever have to endure that kind of pain. And the Petito family certainly deserves answers and justice. But the way this story has captivated the nation has many wondering, why not the same media attention when people of color go missing? Well, look, when I heard that, bro, I'm like, dog, why, why y'all got to bring race into every single situation, bro? Like, I seen a video yesterday. Um, This guy literally ran to the police. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. No. Him and his girl got pulled over. I don't know the I don't know the beginning of the story, but all I seen was the guy had a big kitchen knife. Like he was finna chop off some lettuce type stuff. Like I'm talking about, you know, you ever play like the fruit game on the phone? Like Ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, he had a big kitchen knife, all right? And his girl had a fat black eye. So we knew that he hit her with the doom doom bink boom. You know what I'm saying? He hit her with the Mike Tyson real quick. And it's crazy to me because and this is this is what I'm getting to. Let me get to my point. I, I know I'm taking a long time. I'm black. I, I just said I'm black. What, what is wrong with me? I know. I'm taking a long time. Let me get to the point, okay? The point is, she was getting beat on with the woo, and he was like, oh, yeah, you go call, you go, uh, you go, you go love me, something like that. And then she was like, no, you're going to jail. And he ran to us to, to the, with a knife. Police shot him. And she go post on social media talking about if he was white, he probably wouldn't got shot. Like, what? And that goes back to this, bro. That all goes back to this. Like, dog, you... Why do y'all have to bring race into every situation? If he was white, he probably wouldn't get shot. He ran to you with a knife. The police saved your life, honey boo boo. And then you, missus, you, miss lady, this ain't got, like, what does this have to do with anything about the people of color going missing? Because I've seen plenty of people of color go missing literally in my city. And they done sent out Amber Alerts. They done, they tried their best. It encircled in there, like, going those, like, YouTube and all this and that. It's just the fact that this story right here, like I said in the beginning, this story is really juicy. This story is honestly juicy, bro. It's like it's like watching a Lifetime movie, like right in your eyes. We we seen the whole clip of her before she even went missing. Then the boyfriend and the boyfriend go missing. Now he come back without her and get questioned. Then he go missing out of the blue. And then the, the woman is found dead. It, it's crazy. It's a lot going on right now. Okay? This ain't got nothing to do with race. I'm tired of people bringing up race into everything. They think white, this white, but come on, dog. Be mature. The answer actually has a name. Missing white woman syndrome. The term coined by the late and great Gwen Eiffel to describe the media and public... I, first of all, I don't even think she, Bro, first of all, I, is she even white? She's really pretty. I'm not gonna lie. She's really attractive. But is she even white? I know that I always say white this white that even to the hispanics and mexicans and all that but let me tell y'all something just because a skin color is not black don't mean that they're white okay i know i do it a lot too i need to get i need to get out of the get out of the thing of doing that but just because their skin tone is not black does not mean that they're white 
answers and justice. But the way this story has captivated the nation has many wondering. Well, the answer actually has a name, missing white woman syndrome, the term coined by the late and great Gwen Ifill to describe the media and public fascination with missing white women like Lacey Peterson or Natalie Holloway, while ignoring cases involving missing people of color. Joining me now is Derricka Wilson, co-founder and CEO of the Black and Missing Foundation, and Lynette Gray Bull, founder of Not Our Native Daughters, an organization created for the awareness of the missing, exploited, and murdered indigenous women and children. Thank you both for being here. You know, I, you. I, I, I bring up this point because there's a case that's so similar. A, a journalist friend of mine, um, Derricka, sent me this this story about a young, uh, uh, you know, about some other people that- She's stuttering too much. She's stuttering too much. She's stuttering too much. I mean, this is like, bro, honestly, dog, I don't even want to hear I Like, I'm not really a big race fan and all that, bro. I don't care for race and all this. Like, why does the body of the media coverage run away a lot of uh, my area to an item? That's why criminals missing. Uh, my whole thing is right now, the reason I clicked on this video was mainly because I heard the beginning part and I had a lot to say on the beginning part. It's just simply because it's like, dog, stop bringing race into every situation that y'all encounter. Like, y'all see a black guy go towards the police officer with a rock, threaten the police officer. Just be like, I mean, like, dog, y'all say, oh, if they was white doing that, I bet they wouldn't get shot. I mean, I bet they, uh, yeah, I bet they wouldn't get shot. It's just like, bro, come on, y'all bring race into every situation. Y'all, at this point, I feel like it's the people that find ways to divide us. Y'all don't want to be together. Y'all don't want to be together as one unity. Y'all want to be divided. Because y'all y'all literally just separate yourselves. Like, bro, we can be all cool. We can be, we can literally go against the government. We can do so much. But yet, y'all literally just like, <laughs> y'all find ways to talk about anything, bro. Race this, race that. If that person was white. That person was white. If that person, if that, it's always if that, if that, if that. <sighs> Sometimes do black people look at what they do? I mean, y'all always blaming the police. Y'all always blaming the white folks. Do y'all look at the things y'all do? Do y'all look at the things y'all do? Like, I mean, honestly, do y'all sit there and just think like, okay, I know I'm a young black male with dreads, but I mean, it's a lot of young black males with dreads that sag their pants and do all this, and they're considered thugs because that's what they are sometimes. And you just a young black man with dreads, and you sagging your pants, but the whole time, you you like me. You very chill. You're very polite. But yet, you're, you're trying to fit in. So, of course, you're going to be considered a thug. I mean, that's just human nature. You're going to be considered these things. I know it's stereotyping. I know it's judging a book by its cover, but at the end of the day, look at all the people that... Look at all the black people that do these things. I mean, honestly, I just got to look at y'all stuff and look at the things y'all do. Y'all want to be treated different, act different. Simple as that. Stop acting like, stop acting like monkeys out the, out the freaking zoo. Like, come on now. We can do better. And I'm, and I'm black and I'm saying this. Call me brown skin, light skin. Call me what you want. <laughs> call me what you want. My mom and my daddy is black. Well, my daddy is mixed with uh, Filipino, but that's beside the point. I'm, I, yeah, I got a little Filipino, but I'm still, you know what I'm saying? Still black. I'm done, though. Um, I'm done, man. It's just, this world is just ridiculous. I, after seeing what I seen in the last video, look, I'm done, man. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Follow your boy on all social media platforms down below. Without further ado, it's been your boy, Japan. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.